people staying home during this time, it may be a good time to check out and do a little bit of stargazing. And this week, you'll have some opportunities to see a few cool things in the sky. Joining us live this morning is Derek Pitts, the chief astronomer with the Franklin Institute, to tell us more about what we have this week. Good morning, Derek. Thanks for taking time to be with us this morning. Good morning, Janelle. Thanks for having all right, so we've been hearing a lot of talk about a supermoon that will be appearing tonight. Can you tell us a little bit about the science behind this and what we'll be able to see this evening? Sure, Janelle. Uh, the, obviously, people have been seeing the moon over the last couple of nights. The sky has been clear. But this evening's moon actually is what's called a supermoon, meaning that because the moon is a little bit closer to Earth, its orbit around the Earth at this particular point brings it to its closest point, not just for the month, but the closest of the close points of the year. This is the closest one of all. And so people have adopted the term supermoon because it's a little bit closer than it usually is. Now, it's not a whole lot closer. It's about 7% closer, not a whole lot, but it will appear uh, a bit larger and a bit brighter brighter. I'm sorry, it'll appear 7% larger and 14% brighter. And so the trick about this is, Janelle, though, how do you tell the difference between this particular moon and any other full moon? It's kind of difficult to make that measurement. But nonetheless, this is the closest moon of all for the year. And so what is the optimal time to check it out tonight? Well, the, the optimal time to check it out is as soon as it rises. And in fact, you'll get the biggest effect of what looks like a very large moon if you watch the moon as it's rising over on the eastern horizon just after sunset. So the moon comes to this position of its closest approach at about 2 o'clock this afternoon. But the moon won't be up yet. Full moon doesn't rise until, until the sun sets. That's how the condition works. So if you go out right after sunset, Watch the moon as it's rising over in the east. If you have a good view to the east, that's when you'll get to see. All right, so that's always neat to see. For those of us who are see up the moon early, looking as large as it is next to other objects known size on the Earth, uh -huh. then what happens is, then what happens is it looks really big. Okay, apologies for that. There are a little bit of a technical issue. So you were lagging. I didn't quite hear what you were saying. But I just wanted to say, uh, you know, for those of us who get up early, pre-dawn hours. Hello. Um, there's an opportunity to see the planets as well. Yes, there are three bright planets over in the east in the morning at about 5.30 in the morning. The largest one you'll see is Jupiter. To the left of Jupiter will be Saturn, the ringed planet of the solar system. And a little bit further to the left and smaller is slightly rosy colored Mars. So you can see all three of them in a line and you'll be able to watch them all through the next seven days as they sort of change positions in the sky. So good to view in the morning if you're up that early. All right, that's always neat. And we know that the Franklin Institute is closed right now, like so many uh, institutions are, but people can still catch up with you and learn about astronomy. Tell us a little bit about night skies at home. Yes, since we're all at home and looking for things to do, we're now doing a program, Frank. Franklin Institute, of course. It's called Side for us to understand how to become really good sky observers to look for astronomical objects. We'll give a little bit of basic instruction. We'll help you understand how the sky is laid out. We'll point out a few objects. And as we develop this program every Thursday evening at 7.45 in the evening on our Facebook can really take up a good bit of time page, by the time we get, you should be an expert sky observer. That sounds really neat. Derek Pitts, Chief Astronomer at the Franklin Institute. Thanks so much. Lots to do, uh, even if you are stuck at home. Take care of yourself.